Today's Coaching Coordinator podcast is from a segment of the Louisiana Football Coaches Association Clinic in which LSU defensive coordinator Durante Jones shared his philosophy and then went into an incredible clinic on turnover circuits. Coach went from his philosophy of which forcing turnovers is a big part right into how they reverse engineer ball security to determine exactly how they're going to go about getting the ball out and then creating the drills that go along with it. He's going to share a couple of the circuits just running through the drills that they use, but the entire clinic with game film, practice film, can be found on CoachTube. The link to this one will be in the show notes. This one is part of a bundle that you can get right now on the turnover circuit, uh, bundled with Heidelberg University defensive coordinator Brandon Jacobson's course on creating circuits for tackling and turnovers. Uh, Great savings on this one, only $15 for both courses, which is 67% off. Again, get that in the show notes. So let's get into it. Here's Coach Durante Jones, LSU defensive coordinator. With ball disruption, we first, before we can attack the ball carrier, we have to understand how they're being taught to hold the ball. All right. And so we want to introduce the six points of contact for ball security. All right, so the point one, all right, that is the weakest point of contact. And as you look at the diagram right there, point one is the finger, right? It's the front tip of the ball. That's where a lot of balls come out because of poor finger or palm positioning. All right, so again, point one is is, is definitely the uh, front tip of the ball. That's what we want to focus on, all right? Point two then goes into the bicep. All right, this is the most critical point of contact. All right, the bicep is where fumbles can occur when that bite, when that ball is not pressed tightly against the bicep. And so point, we talk about point one being the front tip of the ball. Point two is the bicep. All right. Point three becomes the chest, hence the high and tight, where you all hear, we've all heard that terminology before, high and tight. All right. And so if I understand from a defensive perspective how the offense is being told and taught how to carry the ball, I know how to attack it by knowing these points. And so if I know that point one is the front tip and point two is the bicep, point three is the chest, now I'm looking for some type of inconsistency in those areas, all right? And then point four being the forearm, all right? And so when you talk about point five and six, the only true way that you can kind of minimize as a ball carrier, can minimize uh, turning the ball over, he has to have point five and six, all right? And that's really when you put two hands on the ball. All right, if you don't have two hands on the ball, there's a 33% chance that there will be a fumble even before we even you know even before we have contact there. All right, just because he can't secure it with two hands. And so we talk about this with our guys in terms of understanding what point that you're going to attack to the ball carrier. All right. And then also we do a great job at practice statting this, right? You got to take stats to this, you got to track it in practice, and we want to emphasize strip attempts at practice. Every, just get a punch on the ball, trying to get a hand on it, trying to rip it out, trying to pry it out. We want contact on the ball at practice. That all creates a mindset for turnovers. And so to help our guys develop that mindset when it comes to turnovers, we're tracking tackling, right? We're gonna get stats. We're gonna put stats to paper for uh, strip attempts. We're gonna put it to paper even for rip attempts, all right? Everything, scooping scores, loose change, that ball on the ground, incomplete pass, I'm running to the ball, I'm scooping and scoring. Everything has to become about the ball to develop that mindset. And so now you would start to see how guys recondition their mind to, okay, I'm going for the tackle here. Oh, I'm the second man, I'm gonna get the ball out. Or I'm going for the tackle, I see that ball is exposed by the ball carrier, I'm going for the ball. And it just helped guys become conditioned to understanding it's all about the ball. All right. You know, our philosophy here defensively is, you know, I pretty much like everyone else, our main objective is to keep the points off the board. Okay. Keep our opponents from scoring. Um, we want to definitely help our offense gain optimal field position by giving them the ball back in various ways, either through a turnover or turnover on downs. Okay. We have to play team defense. 
All right, and that requires everyone's best effort when we're doing that. Everyone has to know their assignment. Everyone has to carry out their assignment to the best of their ability for us to function as a defense. All right, team ball, everyone's accountable. Um, you know, there's no I in team. Um, we got to have trust and accountability. So we talk about those things. We talk about having great effort. We talk about having great energy. We talk about uh, eliminating the mental mistakes. All right. And so as we get to the next point here of our philosophy here at LSU, we want to take the ball away from our opponent in one of two ways. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, taking the ball away, because at the end of the day, it's all about the football. OK, and so we want to force them to give the ball up on downs. Well, how do we do that? First, we got to win first down, right? So we got to hold our opponents to three yards or less on first down, therefore forcing, forcing second and long, all right? We have to eliminate the mental errors. You know, we want to keep things simple for our guys, allow them to play fast so there's not that much thinking on the field, okay? We want our guys just reacting and letting their instincts take over. We want to overemphasize communication. That's one of the biggest things here that we're establishing here with LSU is communication. All right, everyone's on the same page. Uh, there are no secrets in football. So uh, making sure our, our teammate knows their responsibility, we can communicate all checks and adjustments that way. And that helps eliminate the mental errors because now your thoughts are thinking um, and your mind is generating uh, different verbal, verbal uh, communication only out you know, to your teammates. We wanna play team defense, eliminate the big plays. That's huge, big plays kill you. When you're giving up you know, 40 and 50 points a game, there's big plays to be made. Uh, and so if you minimize the big plays, force the offense to work the ball down the field, the chances of you making a play increase. All right. So that's one of the things we want to work on in terms of getting our offensive ball back and then tackle. All right. We're big on fundamentals. Uh, we work on tackling circuits as well here. We start our individuals off every day with tackling some type of tackling drill. I think to be a good tackling team, it's something that you have to practice. You have to emphasize, uh, you have to track it in practice. So we do that here, right? We track missed tackles in practice. We tackle, we, we track uh, inappropriate approaches to tackling in practice. We wanna make it clear cut that that was a tackle in practice. So you don't have to bring them down, but it's all about the approach. And the one thing you can do, and especially in the NFL level uh, where <laughs> there isn't any live tackling until you get to preseason games. And for this past year, there wasn't any preseason games. And so you really have to emphasize the approach to tackling. My eyes, my footwork, my hips, all right? The approach, I got to tempo the hip. All that comes into play and you can grade that day in and day out at practice. So now that the players have something to measure their performance by, okay? And then the second way, we want to get the offense to ball back is force a turnover. All right. And so uh, we want to either knock the ball loose by gang tackling, forcing a fumble, stripping the ball. All right. Uh, pressure the quarterback, get the ball out early, allow him to make ill advised throws, and we can take advantage of the football by having interceptions. All right. And then tight coverage uh, where the quarterback has to hesitate, uh, creating opportunities for sacks without rush, where the rush and coverage working together. Um, fumbles and interceptions take place. So the reason why that's highlighted in red, because that's what I want to really hone in on tonight's topic is forcing a turnover, but by way of fumbles. Okay. And so I'm going to introduce uh, two tackling circuits. All right. That consist of four drills in each circuit uh, that maybe you want to take and, you know, maybe you want to take one drill out and I'm going to show you uh, the setup of the drill, the coaching point of the drill, the example of the drill and then how that drill carries over in game simulations. Okay, so we'll talk about that. And so we're going to talk about two circuits. The first circuit is punch, stab, rip, and stumble bum, which I'll explain what that is. All right. Then you can have the second circuit, which is now quarterback strip, uh, line of scrimmage bat, second man strip, and then country city ball recovery. All right. And so you can break that up because really the first circuit is really just a uh, more one on one type of drills. And then as you get into uh, circuit two, again, quarterback strip and the line of scrimmage bat, that's affecting the throw. All right. Second man strip, kind of a team deal. And then country and city ball recovery. You find out a lot of times that you may have that ball on the ground five times in the game. You may only recover one or two. 
Okay, a lot of times we see guys trying to recover, recover the ball uh, in a situation where they should be cradling or they trying to recover the ball uh, and they should be a scoop and score situation. Coach Jones ended his session with a Q&A and here are some of the questions that directly pertain to teaching the turnovers, the turnover circuit in practice. Do you come across the issue of a high percentage of more missed tackles when kids' mindset is 30 strips attempts per practice? No, because usually what happens is, uh, as that, you know, you want to secure the tackle. So the 30 strip attempts, what we do is we thud, all right? And so once we thud and we've secured the tackle and that ball carrier continues, technically he's already been tackled. But now we want guys getting to the ball, right? So we talk about effort and pursuit. So we track loafs as well. And so once the tackle has been secured, the other guys that are still pursuing the ball, they're taking the strips on the, they're making their strip attempts. And so um, you're not really working on the missed tackles with that. You're working on the one guy securing a tackle and then the other five or six guys who can get to the ball working on strip attempts and they can steal reps that way. And when the other guy has an opportunity to work on his strip attempts, he can get that in. So no, that has not been an issue at all. Uh, another question is uh, how many times a week do you work turnover circuit? Every day. Right, so uh, we practice right now in spring ball, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, unless we are scrimmaging, we will work on turnover circuit every day, all right? And so it's an emphasis for us right now, and especially. So we'll do it every day. You know, we start off with our bags and our pursuit drill, and the next after that, we're going to turnover circuit, all right? And that's the focus. And then, in addition to that circuit, we also are – uh, tracking the strip attempts at practice. So again, it's just an emphasis for our guys to be all about the ball. How long is your circuit in total and how many, how much time do you give to each station? All you need is two minutes of station, two minutes of station, rapid ride, rapid fire, eight minutes, you know, eight minutes, you, you know, you can go a couple of reps a piece and you're done. You know, that's just the time. If you want to have, uh, if you want to just do two drills per circuit or three drills per circuit, depending on how large your defense is, uh, depending on what time of year you're in, you know, I know as guys get into the season, uh, you get kind of restrained by time. Um, and so you may want to do, hey, today we're just going to do two turnovers, two, two drills, you know, um, or you can even work it this way. Hear me out on this. Now, if you get if you get bogged down with time, you may want to have a four four drill circuit, but the groups don't rotate. And so that way, if you got if you're doing it three days a week or two days a week, you can rotate it. So, you know, group, the D line may get the punch drill, linebackers may get the stab drill, DBs may get the rip drill, right? And whoever, you know, if that's all you have, how you want to break it up, maybe corners and safeties can work on, uh, uh, you can split those drills up. And then the next day you just rotate it, right? The next day, now the DBs who are getting the stab, now they're getting the punch drill or they're getting the rip drill. And so you can kind of work it however you want to work it that best fits your schedule and practice. How do you emphasize forcing turnovers while making sure the players are still focused on securing the tackle? And so, again, on the approach, and you, you'll find some guys have the knack. So as they're approaching the ball carrier, all right, they're tracking it. If you see that ball is secured, a lot of times, a lot of the, other, than the, other than the stab, only the stab technique was a front or side, right? Only the stab technique was a front type of deal, and you're seeing the ball. Right, you saw that guys had a good had, have, have a knack for that. Um, naturally, you want to secure the tackle, right? You want to secure the tackle if you can. A lot of a lot of these techniques with the punch, the uh, rip attempt, you're chasing the ball carrier from behind. Okay, uh, the second man in is always a great technique, a great a, a great circuit to use because now you have the guy who's securing the tackle, and now you're emphasizing going for the ball. The the whole purpose of focusing on the strip attempts is to just to get guys' mindset going towards the ball, okay? Now, if I'm going to approach a tackle, a lot, a lot of times the ball may not be in reach for me to get, okay? Or I can thud this guy up. If I thud the guy up and I made a secure tackle, now my now the cavalry is coming, I may try to finish with a rip, all right? And as we go into the weeks when we're game planning, you, you know, you know which, which guys on the opposite team carry the ball loosely. We would always do a... Uh, a ball security cut up to say, hey, here's the running back, man. Hey, he carries that thing low, like a you know, like a loaf of bread. Or uh, the receiver. Once the receiver makes that catch, he's trying to get it in one hand. He's trying to emulate what he's seeing on the on the field on the TV screens on Sunday. So I think it's uh, 
it all has its place. Um, but I think you have to emphasize if you want turnovers. How often do you add the offensive of players to the circuit? Well, when you're working the, uh, the stumble bum, um, where the offensive player is, you know, stumbling and you're still getting swipes on it, you can actually use the uh, receivers and running backs in that because they can get some out of it as well. They can actually simulate going down, and now in their mind, they're focusing on protecting the ball. Because if you notice in that drill, the guys were just trying, right? They're simulating, trying to get it out, but they weren't aggressively ripping it out. The ball carrier, which were the offensive guys, was really simulating protecting the ball. And so, you know, maybe in training camp, you know, that would be good to incorporate that. If your running back coach or your receiver coach is working on some type of ball security, usually those guys run through the bags or there's somebody swiping at the, with, the, with the bag there to try to get the ball out. Maybe you, can, you guys can work together, right? Running backs and linebacker coaches can work together or, uh, you know, the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator can work together if ball security needs to be a focus from the offensive perspective and you're trying to make it an emphasis from the defensive perspective, then you can incorporate the offensive players into the circuit. Stat that always sticks out to me is the team that wins the turnover battle wins 78% of the time. It's a highly correlative stat that you do want to pay attention to and certainly creating the drills and circuits that teach the fundamentals and techniques of taking away the football are very important. You're going to have that cumulative effect of those reps that are built up over time. So what might only look like two minutes or four minutes or eight minutes today that's really going to build up over the course of the season, and you'll see those W's showing up more for you as you take away the football. Coach's entire talk, which does give the practice drills, along with showing the application on game film with Coach Brandon Jacobson's talk on circuit tackles, is available right now as a combo for $15, actually cheaper than just buying Coach Jones's on his own. That link is in the show notes. I think there's a ton there for you to create your own circuits this fall, be able to go through some different circuits with your players to keep it fresh, keeping their interest is always important. You don't want anything to become mundane, yet it is so important to work these skills on the defensive side of the ball. Check the link in show notes to get to that. Follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski and follow all we're doing at CoachAndCoordinator.com.